Hey there, traders. It's October. Welcome to another daily recap. Tuesday, October 1st, it's 8.20 a.m. Eastern. My name is Sam Morton, and I trade futures, primarily the S&P 500 E-minis. The purpose of this channel is to demonstrate a little of how I trade the E-minis and share with you the outcome of each trade I take. Most of the trades are recorded live, so you can see some of the behind the scenes of my approach. We start the morning by identifying levels and zones of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the futures. This is done well before the opening bell. If you know where to look, the market is telling you where it's likely headed next, or at least it's telling you where bull bear battles are likely to occur. And it's those places where we're able to pull points and dollars from the market. The two pairs of dashed lines are zones, one at the bottom and one toward the top. The way I define a zone is an area where price could react from anywhere from within that area. Essentially, I think of zones as one fat level. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if price gets up to 578.58, that level should be good overhead resistance today. They don't have to stop there and turn around, but if they do, it could be the beginning of a pretty good trade. Just to cover myself, I'll mention that if that level doesn't hold, then the bulls are stronger than I anticipated, and that area could be the door to higher prices. The level at 573.76, shown in a lighter blue line, is the close of yesterday. So far in the pre-market session, they've been hanging around this area a lot. I'm starting to see it as a threshold that the bulls would need to close, say, some 15, 30-minute, 60-minute candles above to keep climbing. The bears would want to see closes below that area for another pullback. So it's kind of a fulcrum point in my mind. A pivot, if you will. Not sure if it will be a tradable level. I'd need to see other reasons on my other analysis charts before taking a trade at 573.76. After the closing bell, I will come back to this same chart and discuss any trades that may have resulted from these levels and zones. Any profit gained or loss incurred is going to be covered in a tracking system. We'll go over that at the end of the video. And this way you can see the long-term effectiveness of this approach. Before signing off, we'll look at some longer time frames to see if we can get an idea of what the near term might look like. I'll catch you on the other side. Well, the closing bell was almost six hours ago, just finally finding some time to put this together. So they went down, pretty obvious now, instead of going up. And I want to show you something in the aftermarket hours before we get too much farther into this. So here we are back. This is the close. The vertical line marks the close of yesterday, Monday. I mentioned that they were hanging around the close. This is what they're doing in the pre-market all this time until they opened and just fell away from this. So instead of they got below it, they're probably going to stay below it. They got above it, they're probably going to climb higher. Never got to this area. This is what it would have been a really good place. It still could be a good place tomorrow. We'll see. But anyway, that's the aftermarket hours or the pre-market hours. And then here's what they're doing now, back down to this zone that they spent a lot of time in today. So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's talk through what happened. They opened below this pivot area where they closed yesterday and just fell. It fell right into this level at 570.42. Doesn't matter. It was before 945. This is a good example of why I like to wait 15 minutes. Lately, it's been working out pretty well. If you had taken the trade before the first 15 minutes that elapsed, uh, you would have done okay. But they got under this level. That's telling me this is weak. And they're you know you could take this for a trade on the other side if they come back up. That was possibly a chance. It wasn't really long enough. I wouldn't really have counted this because to me that was kind of the near miss. But... Talking about what you would have done, you would have waited until after 945, which is right here. They closed below this and never got back up to it before they fell again. So this really wasn't would have not been triggered. I didn't trade it. I watched this happen, and I'll show you what the, to happen down here. Essentially, you would have bought in this area. Just to keep things consistent on the tracking log, I'm going to say you bought one at each level. That way it's easy to track. If you did that, you would average in in the middle and bounced up pretty quickly, gave you a base hit, and uh, this was the important area. And the, they got down to 566, happens to be pretty much right at the 25% retracement. Maybe I can look at a daily chart and show it to you later. So there was an important area down here as well, but I just I was out long before they got down here. So I'm not going to say that you could have taken this or would have taken this as a recycle trade on the other side because they attempted it there. By the time they're climbing back out of here at, what is this, 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, there's still just enough chance they're going to continue higher. Counting two base hits, essentially one at each of these levels, and that's it. Here's my trades for the day. So you can see it is right after 10 o'clock, and I have some limit orders just to buy a couple down here. Looking for a quick bounce, and really I could have just taken a base hit off with my combined position. 
but I trailed one and didn't get very far with the remaining contract. But I did get like around 10 points on the first one. So you can see that happening. So ultimately I'll be, I'm long two. I put a fumble threshold over here on the E mini chart. So what this means is if I get closes, a certain amount of closes, certain things happen under this level, then I'm making the decision whether I reverse or I buy again lower if there's more support lower down, which I knew there was kind of a safety net. But this is the lowest zone I had on the board this morning. Anyway, so you see I'm long two. I'm going to take one off almost 10 points and trail the remaining contract with a 11 uh, and a 11 point trailer. And like I said, it didn't get me very far. But I'll just move ahead here so you can see it play out. They start to find some support. There we go. I got the one and that's about as far my point is, if I'd taken all off at the 10 points, I would have been pretty decent. You know, you know what is that, uh, $800, $900, something like that. With a two-contract position, nothing too shabby about that. But uh, they came down and stopped me out with just a few ticks above my break. It even at thirty-seven fifty on the rainy contract. But I don't move it. I mean, I just keep it where it's at. Because for all I know, they're going to find some really good support here and go all the way up for the rest of the day, especially after fall like they did uh, earlier in the morning. But as you know, it didn't happen. I sped this thing up, zoomed out. Kept an eye on it, but no more trades for me or per the rules because they didn't really come into any other levels that I had on the board in the morning. And then it's 570.42 later in the day as it comes up. I mean, yeah, that level was, was respected somewhat, but I uh, don't really think it would have been an easy trade. I, I would have taken I would have considered that done early on as indicated by my dotted line. I mentioned that 25% Fibonacci retracement. Here's what this looks like on the daily chart. So the low back here on September 6, you can see it was 539.44. I've got it snapped to the low. So the low is 539.44. It got as high as 571.89. So I guess that's not exactly right. 571.89. We snap to the top of that. 574.71. I was correct. So just to confirm the low and the high of this kind of interim move here. You know, it's been a lot of days. They came back down. Just want to point out that it was just almost pennies above the 25% uh, retracement. Now, look where they're at. So they came up and met some overhead resistance pretty strong here, pulled back for a long time, came up, came up here and played around with this area and got rejected. But when they busted above this and now they've been above it for a while, they come back down to this area right about here, call it like between 565, 564. That's going to be some, some support, most likely. So if they fail and get below this, then something else is going on and they've got plenty of places to catch price. But simply just looking at the Fibonacci retracements is just something to point out. That, that was going to be some good uh, support, most likely if my levels from the morning that are at a more granular level didn't play out. So I was okay to be on the long side for a while. Of course, the more morning, I'll have more refined levels based on a number of things and what they do overnight. On the play by the rules log right here, wouldn't have traded this first one because it was before, it was within the 15 minutes of the opening bell. Then a base hit on the other two levels below for a total of eight points. Each base hit is four points. And my trades weren't quite as impressive because I uh, just held out for more. Ended up getting a net 5.18 points on a two-contract position because it was $518.75 before commissions. So that's it for today. Sorry it's so late, but had a busy day. Be back tomorrow morning with new levels, a new game plan. Hope you found some value in the content of this video and perhaps learned something. Catch you in the next daily recap video. Have a great rest of your day.